Hello and welcome to English with LJ. I create content that is designed to help you improve your English and take you to the next level, whatever level that might be, whether it's A1, B1, or even C1. In this video, we're going to learn English and we're going to look specifically at prepositions. What are prepositions and how are they used in the English language? Now you can read along with me and that will test your reading skills, or you can just listen and that will test your English listening skills. So let's go. What are prepositions? Prepositions are small but mighty words in the English language that play a crucial role in helping us describe the relationships in a sentence. They act as navigational tools, guiding us through the spatial, temporal, time-related, and logical dimensions of our language. These words help us paint vivid mental pictures of where, when, how, or why something is happening. Function of prepositions. Prepositions act as bridges that connect various parts of a sentence. They establish connections between nouns, pronouns, or phrases, indicating the position, direction, or relationship between those elements. Just as a bridge connects two pieces of land over a river, a preposition connects two pieces of information in a sentence. So let's look at the preposition in. When you use in to describe location, you're typically talking about something being contained within a larger space or area. This can be a physical place, a geographical region, a room, or any other space that has clear boundaries. In often suggests that the object or subject is surrounded by the space that it is located in. So let's have a look at this example. Preposition in for location. The cat is sleeping in its cozy bed. So as we can see from this picture, we have the, the bed and the cat is in the bed. She lives in a small cottage by the lake. So we have the preposition here in. So the person lives in this cottage which is by the lake. So we have two prepositions in, in here. So we have the in for where somebody is living and by where the cottage actually is. It's by the lake. So they are having coffee in the coffee shop. So these people are sat in the coffee shop so they are having coffee in the coffee shop. They are in the coffee shop. Preposition at. When you use at to describe location, you're pinpointing a particular spot or place where something or someone is situated. This preposition is often used when you want to specify a precise location or identify a particular point in space. So the preposition at in terms of location, these people are at a bus stop. They are waiting at the bus stop. So they're waiting for the bus at the bus stop. They are waiting at the bus stop. Let's meet at the coffee shop. Now this doesn't necessitate that it has to be in the coffee shop. Let's meet at the coffee shop. So this could be the, at the location of where the coffee shop is. So you could meet outside of the coffee shop, but you would still be meeting at the coffee shop. Now you might meet inside the coffee shop and you could still utilize at, but it would be more used in, in the sense of outside of the coffee shop. If we were going to meet in the coffee shop, then we would probably use the term or the preposition in. So then we would have, let's meet in the coffee shop. But if we're going to meet 
around the location of the coffee shop, then it's let's meet at the coffee shop. I am at the shops. So let's say somebody calls you, where are you? I am at the shops. This doesn't necessitate that you are in any of those shops. It's just you are in the location of the shops. Now, you may or may not be inside of a shop when you take the, the, the call, but you would, you're giving the location of the, the general area of where you are. You're in the, the location of the shops, so I am at the shops. Now, you could say I am in a specific shop. Uh, so let's say you were in the coffee shop or uh, in the bakery. You you might utilize then a more specific in. But if you're just maybe in the location or you, you're not going to specify a specific shop, then I am at the shops. I am at the location of the shops. Preposition on. When you use on to describe location, you're usually talking about something resting upon or being in contact with a surface. This preposition is often used to convey the idea of something being physically supported by another object. So the preposition on, let's say, utilize this one, the, the cat and the book are on the bed. So rather than being in the bed for, for this one, they are on the bed. If you were, or the cat was under the blankets, then you may say the cat is in the bed. But here, the cat is physically on top of the bed. Uh, on top of the blanket or the duvet. And so we would say the cat is on the bed. The book is also placed on the bed. So the cat and the book are on the bed. Now the painting here, as we can see, is uh, hanging and it's hanging on the wall. The painting is hanging on the wall. So this is where we would use on and we would say the painting is on the wall. Now you could say the painting is in the house because then you would be generalizing the, the house as where the location is uh, and the painting being inside of that, the, the entirety of the house. So it's in the house. But here, when we're just specifically talking about the wall of where the, locate, uh, where the painting is located right now, it is on the wall. And so we would say the painting is on the wall. We could say the painting is on the wall in the house. Now, prepositions in relation to transport work slightly different. So <clears throat> when they come to, to transport, they are sat in the car. They are in the location of the car, but they are sat in the car. Now, if we were to say that at the car or on the car, uh, they would give totally different locations. Now, if we were to say on the car, this would be, say, sat on top of the roof. They would be outside the car, but on the roof or maybe on the bonnet or the boot, but they would be on the car in that way. In, But they are inside. If they were at the car, then they would most likely be stood outside of the car next to the car. And so you would say, I'm at the car. But they at the, the present location here is they are in the car, so they are sat in the car. Now, when it comes to public transport, um, this changes and the passengers are on the bus. Now, we, we they are in the bus, but we wouldn't utilize that in you, when we when we speak it, we would say we are on the bus. Some, let's say you took a telephone call now and somebody said, where are you? You would say, I'm on the bus. You wouldn't say, I'm in the bus. Even though your location is in the bus, you would utilize on the bus. And this usually works when you enter into a vehicle 
that you're able to walk or move about. So we have um, a space here where we would walk, where, whereas with a car, you just get in and you directly sit down. There's nowhere to walk. On the bus, we have a walkway. And so we, we go on board the bus. And so we would say, I am on the bus. And this is the same for train as well, because there is a walkway where you would walk. And so you would say the passengers are on the train. Again, you can say technically that they are in the train, but this is not the way that we would utilize that sentence. So if somebody again rang you and you, you answered the telephone call and where are you? you would say, I am on the train because I board the train, I go on to the train and then I am able to walk because there is a walkway. And so I am on the train. The same is for an aeroplane. So, or a plane as, as it normally gets called in uh, English in spoken English, we would say plane rather than aeroplane. And this is, she is on the plane. So she is sat on the plane. She is looking out the window. So she is next to the window. She is by the window. But she is sat on the plane. And again, this is because there is a walkway. Uh, we The technicality is that, again, she is in the plane, but we would not utilize that. We would say, I am on the plane. The exception to this comes when it is a, a bike. Uh, although there is not a walkway, we would still say on the bike or on the motorbike. He is on the motorbike or he is on the bike. Uh, this the, the reason for this is although uh, there isn't the walkway, we can't say he is in the bike because there is no enclosure as there is in a car. So you cannot say he is in the bike. Uh, that would give a totally different meaning and it would be, you know, physically inside of the bike. If you were to say he is in the bike, in, uh, that would give a totally different understanding of, of where the location was. So we say on the bike or on the motorbike. You could say that for scooter. Is on the, the scooter as well. Now, when it comes to a boat or a ship, we would also say on. And this is because, again, there is normally a walkway. So you have on the boat, on the ship. They are on the boat. They are on the ship. I am on the boat. Uh, because you have a, a boarded walkway. And so... This is where we would say on the boat. Now, if you were inside underneath the, the you know, the main plank of walkway here on top of the boat, you could technically say I am in the boat, but this would not be the normal way of speech. So we would say on the boat or on the ship. Now, the only real um, difference, and, and again, I would say because it doesn't have a walkway. So let's say you had a helicopter. We would say we were in the helicopter. This is because there is not really a walkway and you just like the car. You get in and you sit down. So we would say I am in the helicopter. So this is a basic uh, overview of prepositions. I hope it has been helpful and uh, it's been able to, um, you've been able to, to see how we utilize uh, prepositions in the English language. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. You can join our Patreon if you would like to support the channel. There are lots of different um, topics available on Patreon, lots of different writings and tests that you can utilize in order to improve or test your English. They're all there. There are three different levels. Uh, there are different uh, amounts of uh, 
tests and uh, writings that are available for each different uh, level of support that you can um, support us with on Patreon. So if that's something that you would like to do, you can do. There is a link to do our Patreon in the uh, description. I also have an ebook available for level that takes you from level A1 to A2, and it's an ebook course uh, that is available on Amazon on all of the Amazon channels. It's an ebook and it's downloadable, and you can find again a link to that in the description. So if you would like to uh, purchase that, you can do. It is free on the Patreon, so if you join Patreon, it is free there. Hopefully this has been useful. Please leave a comment. Let me know how uh, you're getting on with prepositions. Are you struggling with them? Are you finding them easy? Has this been useful to you? Leave uh, a comment uh, in the comment section. I will try to respond to them. If you have a video that you would like me to do, if there's a, a topic that you would like me to uh, explain, Again, leave that in the comments and I'll try and get to it and create the video. Uh, I try to create videos that are going to be useful and helpful to the people that are watching. Um, if there's a specific way that you would like me to, to create the videos, let me know. Uh, if this hasn't been useful, also let me know. Because uh, obviously I would like to create content that is beneficial to you who is trying to learn English, what, like I say, whatever le uh, level that might be. So I will say thank you very much for listening, for watching this video, uh, and I'll see you on another video.